In 2016, I published a book that took me five years to write called The Internet is Infected. A world needs the ultimate cybersecurity guide for small business and home computing. The reason that I wrote the book was because all cybersecurity books are geared toward government cybersecurity or corporate cybersecurity. I didn't feel that, felt that the American people needed something to help them understand what has happened in the digital age as they are spied upon, especially after the passage of the Patriot Act under the George Bush administration, a Republican administration, I might add. And the digital Fourth Amendment reads, and I hope you can understand this, and we're going to get into the background and the history behind this. The right of the people to be secure in the digital communication devices and data against collection, dissemination by slash to third parties or government shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the device to be searched, the data to be seized, and the persons or property affected. I wanted to make this video in response to Trump's recent affirmation that him and Elon Musk are going to fight for free speech and do everything they can to make sure that it's secure going into at least these four years of the Trump administration. And of course, like I said, the Second Amendment to protect the First Amendment. But we also must remember the other amendments of the Constitution, and that is the Fourth Amendment, which really has ceased to exist under the FISA courts and under the Patriot Act. I wanted to give you the background on this. When the Bill of Rights was written over 200 years ago, the United States was largely agrarian. So communication depended on a few hand-delivered newsletters and face-to-face -face communication as society progressed. The Supreme Court had been challenged to determine what it is that constitutes an unreasonable search or seizure and has ruled on the side of U.S. citizens' privacy. The first instance was to determine if a letter that was being handled by the United States Postal Service needed a warrant to be opened. The second came with the invention of the telephone and government wiretapping of phone conversations. In both cases, the court determined that citizens could reasonably expect their communications to remain private and should not be subject to government surveillance without a warrant. In the same vein, when you send an email, understand that it's an unencrypted form of communication that is spied on by the government, your internet service provider, and through the corporations. In fact, it's known to the whole world every time you send an email. The way that you can get around that is to encrypt that email and send it. That's the same as putting it in an envelope and mailing it through the U.S. Postal Service. Most people don't understand this, and most people don't do this. In fact, I know of very few. There are also en encrypted email servers that you can use. And of course, my book in 2016 taught about all these things. And you might say, well, why didn't people buy your book? Well, I ran out of money. I couldn't market it. I sent it out for review to places like NPR, uh, the Freedom of the Press Foundation, all sorts of places. And I did not understand how they were being censored and monitored by the federal government. And therefore, the book never saw the light of day. However, in this ruling, the Supreme Court created a gaping hole that allowed the government access to record, recover, and view information that a U.S. citizen has turned over to a third party. As the digital age rapidly progressed, this hole effectively nullified the Fourth Amendment. A warrant has become a thing of the past in the digital age for just about all communication. The data sense just about everything we do while using the infected Internet is shared with a third party. Anything we do while using smartphones, text messages, email, social media, and cloud computing can be shared with everyone and is. So when you put things on the cloud, everything that you put there is violated. It is, you were not, in, under pri current privacy laws, it can be shared with third parties and is. So Congress attempted to address this with the passage of the Electronic Communications Privacy Act in 1986. But as the digital age progressed, this law became moot, which is discussed in, of course, chapter one of, of the book. The current 
just for a lot of people that don't know what the Fourth Amendment is, the current Fourth Amendment reads, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated, and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and persons or things to be seized. The reason that our forefathers put that in was remember they were fighting the British Empire, and the British would raid their houses and search them unreasonably, and they did not want that to ever happen again to the American people, and has happened now to Donald Trump under the FISA courts. The FISA courts are a violation of the Fourth Amendment, and Trump has promised to address them. I hope they're going to be abolished or at least reformed so that these violations of the Fourth Amendment cannot continue and should not. All Americans should be for that. It is my belief that no law can be passed that will take back the privacy rights that have been surrendered in the digital age. The time has come to call a convention of the states to return the United States to the original version of the founders, which was a limited government that respects the privacy of its citizens. We need nothing less than a digital Fourth Amendment added to the U.S. Constitution. Okay, the reason why I said a convention of the states was that I don't believe that any U.S. Congress, I could, I'd like to be proven wrong, but I don't think the Democrats will vote for privacy rights. That's just my opinion. I hope that they will prove me wrong. The two, there are two methods to amend the Constitution. More education for you. Two-thirds of the House of Congress agrees to propose a particular amendment. Don't think that's going to happen but I'd love to see it happen. Two-thirds of the state legislatures pass applications for a convention for the purpose of proposing amendments on the same subject. So you can see our forefathers could foresee that a Congress drunk with power might not want to do what's right for the American people. The founders knew that the day might come when a bloated federal government drunk with the abuses of power may need to be reined in by changing or amending the United States Constitution. The current situation of uncontrolled corporate and government spying, out of control spending, irresponsible centralized government, and so much more, needs a restoration of privacy, liberty, and American renaissance. My proposed digital Fourth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, one more time for you, the right of the people to be secure in their digital communication devices and data against collection, dissemination, by and to third parties or government shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause supported by an oath or affirmation and particularly describing the device to be searched, the data to be seized, and the persons or property affected. So in other words, a smartphone can be searched only when a warrant is issued. These are the things that we need to protect us in the digital age. May God bless you and may God bless America.